A very warm welcome to the wonderful world of Bridge. Bridge is the most fascinating card game on the planet. Fascinating and at times frustrating. It's a really social game. You make a lot of really lovely friends at the Bridge table. So I hope you're going to enjoy this journey. We have lessons lined up for you to take you right through to your first game of Bridge at the Bridge table. Bridge is a game for all abilities. It's a great leveller and there's a place for everyone at the bridge table. So let's get underway with our introduction to bridge in this lesson one. The game of bridge is, as they say, a game of two halves. One half is an auction and the second half is the play of the hand. So in the auction, each person in the partnership is talking to the other to describe what they have in their hand to work out what is their best contract. The second phase is the play of the cards where the winning partnership now needs to fulfil their contract. I've invited a few of my friends round for a game of bridge and we're going to watch them playing a game so you can see a game of bridge in action. So this first phase, the auction, that's the process of talking to each other to describe the contents of your hand. The dealer is the first person to bid. Bids must be made in the correct order. Bids are made clockwise. If you have nothing to say, you can pass. The bidding is written down and the auction concludes when there have been three passes in a row. The contract is the last bid made before those three passes. The player who bids the suit first will be the declarer. The declarer is the person who plays the hand. The opening lead is made by the person on declarer's left. Dummy lays their cards out on the table with the trump suit on their right. The cards laid on the table are also known as the dummy. Declarer plays their own cards and dummy's cards. A trick is a collection of four cards, one from each player. A player must follow suit where possible. The highest card of the suit led wins the trick unless a trump is played. If you win the trick, you lead to the next trick. Each player keeps their own cards in front of them. If you win the trick, the card is placed vertically in front of you. If you lose the trick, the card is placed horizontally in front of you. In bridge, cards are ranked from the highest to the lowest and the ace is high. There are no jokers in bridge. And the suits in bridge are ranked. And it's important that you learn the ranking of the suits. So the lowest rank suit is clubs and then diamonds. They are the minor suits. Next come hearts and then spades. Those are the major suits. And at the top of the tree, it's no trumps. Now to try and help you learn those rankings, um, if you notice, they do run in alphabetical order. So C, D, H, S, clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades. If that helps you, you can use that. I know of a one bridge teacher went into a prison to teach and she asked the inmates who'd gathered, um, could they think of any way of remembering the ranking of the suits? And a voice from the deep came, shit happens, don't care. So if that works for you, fine. But by the end of this lesson, you want to have learnt the ranking of those suits. The reason why is because in the auction, you have to bid along a bidding ladder and you have to go forever upwards up the bidding ladder using the ranks as your guide. So if you look at this diagram of the ranking of the suit, you can see the lowest bid possible in bridge is one club. If your partner were, for example, to bid one spade 
And now you wanted to mention some hearts. Well, you can't go back down the bidding ladder. You can't now bid one heart once one spades has been bid. You'd have to go up to the two level, to two hearts. And in the auction, this is what you do. You bid up through the ranking of the suits, up to your agreed contract level. The reason why we've got some of those contracts highlighted is because they are a very significant level of bidding in bridge. They are what is termed the game level. And at the game level, you get lots of bonus points for making your contract. We will look in more detail in lesson two at how many tricks you are contracting to take at the different levels on the bidding ladder. Many of you may have already played a card game which involves trumps. Whist, 500 and Euchre are all examples of card games that involve trumps. But in Bridge, if in the auction you have ended up in a contract which involves the naming of a suit, so you're in clubs or diamonds or hearts or spades, then naming that suit will have declared that suit to be trumps for that hand. Trumps is the dominant suit. A card from the trump suit is more powerful than any other card. Here is how a trump works. Declarer is in a heart contract on this hand, so hearts are trumps. The left-hand opponent has led a diamond. Dummy must follow suit, but does not have any diamonds left. So dummy can trump in or rough the diamond. Because hearts are the dominant suit, that small trump heart will beat any diamond played to that trick. Even the ace of diamonds would be beaten by the five of hearts because hearts are trumps and are more powerful than the other suits on this hand. No trumps means there is no dominant suit so the highest card played in the suit led to each trick will win that trick. In Bridge, we use honour cards to value our hands. The honour cards are the Ace, King, Queen and Jack. And in Bridge, they are all assigned a point count. So an Ace is worth four high card points. A King is worth three high card points, a queen is worth two high card points, and a jack is worth one high card point. So you'll hear that expression, high card points, throughout these lessons, and it's abbreviated to HCP. If you added up the total points for each suit, it would come to 10 high card points. And on each deal, because there are four suits, there are 40 high card points available to all players at the table. Have a look at this hand. Imagine you've been dealt these cards. How many high card points in this hand? Well, if you add them up, you'll see you've got two aces there, two jacks and a king, and that comes to 13 high card points. Have a try on this hand. How many high card points here? Well here you've got two kings. Remember they're worth three each and a queen is two. So you've got eight high card points. Try this hand. How many high card points here? Well, that takes a little more adding up, doesn't it? That's quite a good hand there. You should have come to a total of 19 high card points. When you are playing bridge and you are in the auction phase, what you are trying to do in your conversation with your partner is to find what is called a fit. And a fit is when you and your partner have between you eight or more cards in one of the suits. If there is a fit in a major suit, remember the majors were the hearts and the spades, then this will be the trump suit. If after your conversation in the bidding you can't find a fit, well if there's no fit, choose no trumps. 
If there is a fit in a minor, then you can choose whether to play in the minor or no trumps. All the time in bridge, you're looking to either play the contracts in a major or in no trumps, because when we come on to look at the scoring, these achieve a higher score in bridge, and the minors have the lowest score, so they are always your last choice of contract to go into. When you're looking at these eight or more cards, it's not the quality that counts, but the quantity. As long as you have eight or more cards in the suit, you will have found a fit, and it doesn't matter on the quality of those cards. Well, here are two hands for you to look at. Which suit do you and your partner have a fit in here? Remember, we're looking between the two hands. Can you find an eight or more card fit? Well, yes, if you look at the heart suit, you'll see one person has three hearts, another person has five hearts. Five and three is eight, so you found your eight card fit. It's in a major, and you would name hearts as the trump suit on that hand. Have a look at these cards. Can you find an eight card or better fit between you and your partner here? Yes, look at the spades. You've got four spade cards in each hand. So you're able to name spades as the trump suit and you would play this hand in a spade contract because you found your eight card fit. So as a partnership, what are you looking for? Step one, trying to find that fit. Eight or more cards in the same suit between both hands. Step two, you're deciding what level to play your contract in. There are three main levels of contract in bridge, and it depends upon how many total points are held in your partnership. So when you and your partner have less than 25 points between you, you're looking for what's called a part score contract. Once you reach 25 points between you, then you are looking for a game level contract. And that game level, as I mentioned earlier, that's when you receive a big bonus. So you're always on the lookout to find 25 or more points between you and bidding game to try and get your bonus. The slam level well, we won't be getting up around there until less than 10, but just so you know, you're going to need around 33 points between you and your partner to be bidding a contract up at the slam level. Let's have a look at the game level. This is such an important contract to master. Because of this large bonus you're going to get for bidding and making game, you always want to be on the lookout for it. So the number of tricks you're going to need to make game depends on the contract you're in. If you're in no trumps, then the game level is the bid of three no trumps, which will mean taking nine of the 13 available tricks. If you're in a major suit contract, so either hearts or spades, then the game level is up at the four level. So the contract will be four hearts or four spades, and you're going to need to take 10 of the available 13 tricks. And the game level in a minor, so that's clubs and diamonds, is the five level. And that will mean you're going to need to take 11 out of the 13 tricks. You can see why minor contracts are the least popular, because you've got to make more tricks to reach that game level and get your bonus. Well, that's just an opening taster of the game of bridge. If you go onto the New Zealand Bridge website, you will find the handout that accompanies this lesson, as well as a quiz and answers. Now, doing your homework, Sorry, but it really does help. So I would urge you to have a look at those quizzes and answers. And if you have any questions regarding the topics covered so far, have a word with your teacher. But for now, 
what I'm going to get you to do is between now and your next lesson, you want to review your lesson notes as soon as possible and have a look at them again before you attend your next lesson. And I'm also going to give you a 30 second challenge. I want you to deal out a pack of cards into four hands want you to practice picking up a hand, sorting it into the suits and writing down on a piece of paper the number of your high card points. And I want you to try and nail that in 30 seconds. Well, good luck with your homework. Hope you've enjoyed this taster of the game of bridge. Happy bridging.